ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Acorn Whistleblower and Senior Advisor to True the Vote, Anita Moncrief. Thank you. It is an honor to be here today. I have to honestly tell you that I could not have imagined this day a little over five years ago. It wasn't possible. There was no such thing as grassroots on the right. It didn't exist. So when I was at ACORN, and I was a radical organizer working, uh, I was getting frustrated over the things I saw. There was a pattern of what we called an agenda of what was going to happen, and that included ACORN's People's Platform. And that platform was all about universal health care and forced unionism and cap and trade and EPA run, run wild. All of the things that we were going to pass right when Obama was getting elected. And I was right there in the middle. So when I got tired of this culture of victimhood, of this pattern of using blacks as a shield for all these criminal activities that were occurring from voter fraud to falsifying registrations, whatever, there was no place to go. So there I was, tired of the victimhood, tired of the race card, looking around, and it was isolating. It was sad. And that was the end of 2008. And then 2009 hit with the rise of the Tea Party. And I didn't think that I would be a Tea Party person. I'm a radical liberal. I voted for Obama, you know? <laughs> but. I'm posting stuff on Facebook, and I'm looking around, and it's the conservatives that are laughing at my jokes and my posts, and I'm like, honey, this conservative thinks I'm funny. You know, I couldn't believe it. You know, I didn't have anything in common with a white guy from New York that was 70 years old and had voted Republican all his life, but that was the rise of the grassroots. That was the arms that were stretched out and embraced me and let me know that I had found a home, that it was okay to go up against the thing that I had been taught. <laughs> that <laughs> things like that being a black, being black was a, it wasn't a disease, it wasn't an illness. I don't need 30 days to vote. I have a photo ID, <laughs> regardless of what uh, Eric Holder thinks. You know, I don't need the government to take care of me and my kids. I learned that ACORN wasn't fighting to end poverty. The money was in the fight. And as long as they were out there saying they were fighting, they were breaking in millions of dollars across the spectrum. And there we were at the same time saying, you're racist because you don't want blacks to vote. You're racist because of this and that. And at the same time that we were doing that, they were moving behind the scenes and ruining America and keeping us divided. And that's exactly where we have been, <laughs> divided. But now, and this, I know you've heard this before, but I will say it again. Right now, I am in Texas for a reason. I'm working with True the Vote. You saw Catherine Engelbrecht this morning. And I will tell you, if they take Texas, the rest of this country will fall. And that's why I'm there. We're organizing against Battleground Texas. And I remember being at the left, and it was a dream. This is the dream situation. We've got a radical in office, and we're poised to take Texas? I mean, no, they couldn't even think that this would happen. And here we are. I always told my mom back in 2009 and 2010, if it gets bad, Get to Texas and I'll meet you there. <laughs> what happens when that does not, that's not a reality anymore? This is what we're fighting for. This is what I'm fighting for. We are bringing a new grassroots ground game and it's starting in Texas this year. Believe me, we are talking conservative organizing for the right things, for liberty, for getting out there and taking America back block by block. We didn't lose it that way, but that's exactly how we're going to take this country back. And we need to remember that no matter what, it is worth fighting for, it's worth dying for. Some people tell me, oh, I'm frustrated. You know, we've been doing this for years. Michelle Obama said that her husband would never let us go back to our normal lives, and she was right. We will constantly be out there. And this, we're telling you, is why I fight, because I was creating a world that I didn't want my daughter to live in. That is my American dream. My family, that's the American dream that I fight for every single day. And let me tell you, I know you just heard this before, but it's what keeps me going. And it's that quote from Abraham Lincoln, that my dream is of a place in time where America will 
once again be, the, be seen as the last best hope of earth. That's exactly why I fight, and that's why we're here today. Thank you.